y'all. I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com. And today I have an art journal process video for you. I am starting my brand new art journal. This is a Dilusions journal and I'm super excited. I'm just going to kind of open up to the middle to get started doing a double page spread. And I am planning on kind of trying to keep it simple. We'll see how it evolves. It almost never ends up exactly like what I think it's going to, but I have just some koi watercolors pulled out here. And then a couple of my favorite stamp sets from Jane Davenport that I would like to use. And we're just gonna kind of go with it and see what happens. So um, I will definitely link everything that I end up using down below. Otherwise, I will put you guys on fast forward. Let's go. All right, I was so excited to jump into this art journal um, and to break it in and do my first page. I had a vision for this page. I definitely wanted to do a lot of watercolor. I wanted a really vibrant background, but I wanted soft edges in the background. So I knew watercolor was kind of the way to go. Um, and basically I'm gonna kind of outline the edges with color and it's going to end up being kind of a rainbow look so i have the pink into the purple coming around the bottom and then i'll go into blues and greens and then you can see at the top that i had the pink going into the yellow which will also come into the greens over on the left side so it's kind of like a rainbow along the edges of the page this is sped up four times as fast as I did it. It took many layers. Um, I would put color down, spread it around, blend it a little bit, and then dry it or use a paper towel to soak up some of the pooling that was happening and then add more. And as I added, I started kind of pulling it in to the center of the page and you can see I'm pulling up the book and letting it move and drip adding a lot more color here just because I liked that look I like the look of the movement of how things change um, as you're like moving the page around I think that adds interesting movement to the background so I'm going to kind of build this a little bit I'm going to let music play while I finish this watercolor section and all the layers just know that I dried in between um, in between different layers.
Okay, you can see it was quite a process to get it this far. It took a long time to get the page to dry. And I decided I still wanted a little bit more deep, rich color by the edges. And so I actually ended up reaching for my Neocolor 2 crayons. And I pulled out some crayons that I thought would fit color-wise with what was already going on on the page. And I just added some crayon to the corner. And you can see how it's kind of defining the corner right there. So I'm gonna do this magenta and then I'll pull a purple to the bottom. I'll do a fun green over in the corner. And the Neo colors play well with watercolor because they are water reactive. It's gonna work well with that base underneath it. And it's just gonna help me define the corner. So all I'm doing is adding the Neo color to the corners and then I'm going to just pull a water bottle out and spray down the Neo color so that it reacts a little bit, starts moving, but it won't move quite as much as the water color did. So see, reacting, you can see it start blending. When I move the page, it starts moving and I'm trying to use just watercolor. I end up using, or just water. I end up using my finger a little bit on a couple parts, but otherwise that is pretty good for the base of the page. All right, I did let it dry completely and now I'm gonna start with the rest of the page. The longest part of this process by far was certainly getting the background how I wanted it, but it was a great start in this new art journal because it really allowed me to kind of play with what the paper was going to feel like. So I'm gonna ink up this stamp. It's a sweet little bear hugging a girl. I love these Jane Davenport stamps. I think they're amazing for all kinds of things, for card making and things like that. I love them for art journaling, um, just because I don't have the confidence to draw some of these things on my own. So I had this vision of this bear and this girl hugging, and then these this particular star from a different stamp set. Um, I will link these stamp sets below if I can find them. I'm not sure that uh, they are made anymore. And I wanted this bear and this girl to be sitting on a bed of stars. So that's what they're doing. All of these stars kind of nestled up underneath them and coming up around them. And then the stars are just going to be taking off from underneath them. So the stars are going to come up the page to the upper left, um, trying not to space them like super equally apart, like having them be really sporadic and trying to remember that I do want to have a title on this page. So I want to leave room for lettering up at the top. And there you go. So my stars are going to kind of come across the page. I just keep going until I feel pretty good about it. I end up adding a few more at the bottom just to change it up. I need, it needs just a little more. You can see I put it away and then I'm like, nope, not happy with it. Bring it back out. <laughs> change my mind. I even took it off the stamp block. Nope, changed my mind. Looked at it again and now adding more to the bottom. I, it just felt like it dropped off too fast. So I needed them to have a nice secure ground of stars to, to be sitting on. So that will be in place. And then I want the stars to have some color to them. So I will pull out my Neo colors again to accomplish that. All right, and with the Neo colors, I am just filling in some of these stars with different colors. And the idea is that there would just be a color concentration where each star would be. So I fill it in with the color. I'm not filling in every single star, just um, the ones that have taken off, taken flight are filled with color. And then a few of them that they are sitting on are gonna be filled with different colors as well. And then I will activate that color with the spray bottle to get the water on there and then just use a paintbrush to lightly move the color because it didn't quite move as much as I thought it would just with the initial spray bottle. Um, so here's the spray bottle moving everything out of the way so I have room spraying all of those. You can see it kind of stood still so I'm going to bring in a paintbrush and kind of just brush along almost to create a shooting star look as the color just comes out from the star because I wanted it to look like the stars were coming, were shooting out from where these two were sitting. And again, using the paper towel, anything that pulled that I didn't like, I just used my paper towel to clean up a bit. Okay, so I let that dry all the way, and then I decided I'm gonna add some splatters. And the way I worked on the splatters, again, using the Neo Color, I colored it on my large acrylic block that I used for stamping and then add a little bit of water and it activates it and it makes it into a watercolor feel. So then you can see just making sure it's all activated and then splattering it across my page, sticking with the rainbow. So again, I went with the magenta and then the orange and then this is a beautiful kind of jungle 
green color that I'll add over in this corner. And I just wanted it to look a little bit messier. I love splatters. We all know I love splatters. So I felt like it was really appropriate to add splatters in right at the beginning of this art journal book. Um, I'm kind of pumped that I'm not doing this art journal in order. So one of you guys, I think, told me last time I started an art journal not to do the pages in order because that can kind of warp the binding of the book, which seemed very logical to me. So I just opened up to the middle and started in this particular art journal. And I think it's going to be fun and exciting to just kind of open up and be random about where each page is going to go instead of having them progress um, from beginning to end. It'll, it won't quite be the evolution that you might see in other art journals, um, but it'll be fun to look back on. Like I said, one of my big goals with this art journal is to not use quite as much dimension as I have used in the past to make this one be a little bit flatter. So I will end up using more mixed media because I'm not going to do quite as many collage pieces I'm sure it'll happen sometimes, but not quite as many as normal. I did end up deciding that I wanted to color in my bear and my girl, but they are not going to be realistic colors at all. We're going to go with a peachy tone and a magenta for this beautiful bear. And then the girl is going to have purple hair because why not? I think one of my secret dreams is to have purple hair. I've never been brave enough to dye my hair purple, um, but I kind of wish I would because I think purple hair would be so much fun. My favorite color. Maybe I'll give it a try someday. So I'm just going to shade these in. I thought it was fun to have them in those bold colors. It's a very whimsical feel, very dreamlike on this page and um, having them filled in is really nice. So shading and then we'll add the purple to her hair and I think I went with dark blue for her dress. She's so beautiful. I love this embrace and I love the the look on their faces of love and caring. I think that is so sweet. Blue on her dress there and then I think I do her skin a like yellowish tone just to just to be a little bit different. Blue on her socks, a different kind of blue. And then adding here, yeah, kind of a yellow tone. So there's my little pairing, and I think that they are super adorable. Now it's time to add a title. The last thing I do on this page for now is adding a title. And I say for now because as I was uh, photographing this finished page, it felt less and less finished. I feel like it needs something else. I'm not sure what it needs yet, so I'm gonna give it a little space and then I can always come back and add something later. Perhaps another art journal entry will inspire me. It just feels like there's there's something else to be done, that it's not quite finished. That's okay, that happens with art journaling sometimes. I know it's not finished. I wasn't inspired to like figure it out. Like nothing was jumping out at me to figure out what I wanted to finish on this page. So we're just going to kind of let it sit. If you have any ideas of how you think it might have a more finished look, then let me know below. I ended up titling this page release because I felt like the stars weren't running away from them, but that they were releasing these stars with their embrace. And I think of the relief um, not the relief, but the release I feel when I hug loved ones. I think that that is um, a wonderful feeling and release is definitely what it is when I, when I have that hug. So that's the word that came to mind. So I titled it release and that will be about it for this art journaling spread. I hope you enjoyed this video and this very first art journaling spread in this new art journal. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and um, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification button. I have linked supplies that I used down below, so make sure to check those out. And I want to give a huge shout out to my scrappy YouTube members. Thank you so much for all of your support. It really means the world to me. It makes me able to keep up this channel. Thank you so much. If if you are interested in becoming a Scrappy YouTube member, then make sure to click the join button or there is a link in the description box as well. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.